Hello everyone, your favorite Senso Tech Jedi Lisa here with a Chrome specific video. We are going to be looking at the tools that are available for Chromebooks. So let's just jump right into it. All right, once you get into your portal, you can go ahead and single sign on with your Gmail account. Just simply click on the button that says login with Google, and there you go. Now, once we're in the portal, you'll see here I have set this up to limit it to the tools that are specific to Chromebooks. One of the first things I want to talk about is this amazing Google Classroom integration that we offer. So what we do is we seamlessly go out to your Google Classrooms and pull those into your portal. So if you already have these classrooms created, because a customer of, of ours guess what we're gonna pull those classrooms right on over and at any time you can delete or add new classrooms so once you add those and a sync happens within the sense of portal it's gonna pull those Google classrooms right on over and that means you can just see the students that you need to see for that class period now you see I have first period AP physics second period biology let me give you a little tip here if you want to have these sorted in an order that you can click through the day remember if you put a one or an a at the beginning that will sort that class to the top the second one put a two or a B third put a three or a C and that will help you when you're creating your Google classrooms to keep that in mind so that they will sort themselves into the order that you need them to be in within your Senso portal so within these classrooms we're gonna stay right here in this second period biology let's go ahead and talk about this some of the tools that we have available you see here you can see the device name, the username, and its status. Uh, you can select all of them here. You can deselect all of them right there. There's the filter of the members. You can look at device details and you can, I would actually have to select a device for that. And you can also refresh your group members. You can search for certain Chromebooks within this view as well. Let's go ahead and go on over into thumbnail view. Within thumbnail view, now again, these are live thumbnails. These are not screenshots, it's not a timeline. Line. This is a live thumbnail of what is happening on those devices. We give you some options as far as what you can see within this view. If you have it set up where you can see everything outside of the browser, then again, you can see everything even with the browser closed. Your school may have it set up where you can see active tab only. That means the users have to be in the Chrome browser and they have to have an active tab open. If you see no active tab here in this screen, means that you cannot see anything outside of the tab they're in in that browser or they have the browser closed down that's what that means so you may have a couple different setups within your Senso portal so the tools you have here you can select all you can deselect all and again these checkboxes are very important because you can come in here and be very selective about which tools you want to run on certain devices so maybe you don't want to send everything to everybody you could just select that specific Chromebook you can use that filter again now this one I really like because you see we give you a lot of information at the top of the thumbnail but maybe you don't need to see Chromebook and the user's email go ahead and you can choose just username to see their email or the one that I like the most is display name just see the user's first and last name on there it makes it very nice and clean in this thumbnail view to see just the users that are logged on to those devices you can make these thumbnails bigger or smaller this is for a switch monitor if you want to switch monitor in a dual monitor setup mostly for PC devices and you can change the quality you can also again search for a specific user if you know exactly which user you are looking for in this view now Outside of that, you can also go into a bigger screen view. So if I click on this, you see that I'm going to go into tabbed view. So I can click on multiple Chromebooks within thumbnail. And now you can see I can switch back and forth within the tab view. Let me go ahead and close that tab view out to just full screen view of one device. Now here we're looking at one device. I have gone into full screen view. I can take it even further. I can go into big screen view if I wanted to get a really clear view of that device. I hit escape on my keyboard to take me back here and then I would simply click exit full screen. Again, you have the ability to change the quality or you can even grab a screenshot of what's happening on that device right here from this view. So let's talk about the tools that we have available for Chromebooks. We're going to start with Access. Access allows you to block, whitelist, or allow only websites on these Chromebooks. 
Now there's a lot of options in here. The options you need to be aware of that work on Chromebooks are website URL, website content, which is going to look at the content. So those are going to be like big categories of things you want to block and keyword. Now keyword is not going to block. Keyword is just going to raise an alert that a keyword has been typed in and has caused a violation. You can set it to take a screenshot of when these happen if you need to. Now you see down here at the bottom, I've added a couple of terms in like facebook.com. I want to block that. Now within Google Classroom, you have the ability to either turn it off or set it on a schedule. So you can set the schedule for 15, 30, 45, one hour. You can get a custom time or end of day. Be aware end of day is not the end of the class day. End of day would be the end of day 1159. So just be aware that if you set it to that, it's going to block it for the uh, to the end of the day. Now whitelist, now you would use this in conjunction with block. Maybe you set it for blocking all YouTube videos, but you want to light whitelist a specific uh, YouTube that has educational purposes. So you could copy and paste or type in that URL right here. And allow only will let you type in one or many uh, specific URLs or websites that you only want them to go to, to keep them in a very small number of websites that they can utilize on those Chromebooks. Block sound. Have the ability to block the active tab of these Chromebooks and even set the volume limit and you can mute their, micro their microphones remotely. Block USB. Have the ability for them to not be able to put a USB into Chromebooks and open anything using a USB drive. Block web. Now this one is uh, a little misleading is that it doesn't disable the internet. What it does, it disables the browser. So you see here you get this nice little icon that says internet disabled. Um, that means that if they try to open up Chrome browser and go anywhere, it's going to say no, you don't have access to that. But they, the internet does stay connected to the device. When you're ready to go ahead and re-enable the internet, you would click run and you'll see that little icon will go away and they can go ahead and open up Chrome and do whatever they need to do. Now broadcast. Now I'm going to use one of our other tools just really quickly on one of these devices because I want to showcase what this tool is going to do. Now let's say you have a user that is a remote user and you but they have a slideshow that they want to present to the class. You could actually select all your devices, select that user as the presenter or the broadcaster. You can toggle on or off to show broadcast in a separate window or not allow them to close the broadcast or change the size. This is something that's really uh, more for our PC users. And then when you click start, what it's going to do is it's going to grab that and it's going to push it out to the other users so they can then present their report. And when they're done, you can click stop and it's going to go ahead and stop that broadcast on those other devices. A very handy tool for remote classrooms, virtual classrooms, hybrid learning, whatever the terminology is. Okay. Now close tab, I'm going to use right after I show you launch because, and you'll see why in just a moment. So launch is the ability to select one or multiple devices and push out and open up websites and extensions. So here I want everybody to go to code.org. I can go ahead and click run and that's going to push that right on out to those devices. Um, I can also open multiple tabs, iStation.com going to go ahead and click run and it's going to open another tab and run iStation.com. You can also run extensions. So uh, you'll see here I have actually saved a shortcut for Google Sheets. I'm going to go ahead and select that and it's going to run that extension on those Chromebooks. Now I have another video. Look for that video in the classroom management playlist when I talk about how to use the launch tool. I walk you through where to find this unique ID for those uh, Chromebook browser extensions so that you can run them in here. Now also you can save these as a shortcut. So if this is something I utilize all the time, so I'm actually, this one is already set in there. You saw that I have these as slides and sheets because I don't want to have to go out and find that unique ID every time I want to run that. So I'm actually going to change this back to website and say, you know what? I use code.org all the time. I want to save it as a shortcut. I'm going to type in code.org so I know what it is. I can even save it as my own button. You could save and run if you'd like or save and close for use at another time. And you'll see what's going to happen here because I selected those two options. I'm going to have this lovely little shortcut here that I can click on without having to put code.org back in or right here. I've created my own icon, my own button right up here in my toolbar. If I click on that, it's going to go ahead and open that for me and I don't have to keep going and copying and paste every time I want to use that tool. 
Now close tab. Close tab is super awesome. Let me make this a little bigger so you see what's going to happen here. I can actually select an individual user and close that tab just like that. You'll see it's going to start closing those tabs down. Or I can select all my users and I can actually, if I keep clicking it, it's just going to keep closing that active tab all the way right down to their desktop. So again, you can be specific about going ahead and taking over control of that device and closing those tabs down, um, all of them or individually. Lock screen, have the ability to lock a screen. You can change the background color, give a customized message. So let's just say green and we'll say hello world, just so for an example. So you can go ahead and run this and this is a, a great classroom management tool. Maybe you want everybody to, to focus, to listen to all the instructions before they get um, into the lesson so you don't have to repeat yourself a thousand times. You could use this and when you're ready for them to go ahead and rock and roll with their lesson, you would simply click unlock and it's going to unlock those devices for you. No problem. That's a really great tool. And again, save it as a shortcut, you know, something that you utilize all the time. Go ahead and save it up here so that it shows up right here in your list view. So if this is something you wanted to lock and you wanted to save it as a shortcut, you see that it's very easy. Hello. And you can save and close. And then it's going to modify up here at the top for you. You see how it uh, refreshed itself there and then now you can go back in and you can uh, excuse me I'm on the wrong tool you can go ahead and launch that as needed right there you can even set it to unlock if you want to have um, again with these shortcuts if you want to set it to um, unlock and lock as a shortcut you can don't worry about that it's gonna have that right there all right let's talk about send file let me send a file to Johnny D I'm going to upload this file right here. I can choose it from any device, whether I'm at home um, and I want to, I'm going to be using this at school the next day, or I'm at school and I'm going to be at home the next day. It's really easy to, because this is a cloud-based product, it's going to follow your account around until you delete it. So go ahead and select whatever file that you've uploaded, lesson plan. Now for these, really the save to location and arguments and login permissions, this is all going to be for our Windows devices. Really the only tool you'll need to utilize down here is automatically run after sending. And once you do that, you actually have to select a device. I'm going to go ahead and select all of them and I'm going to send that on over and you see it's going to slide up right here and it's going to give them option to see that image that I sent to them. They can either save it to their cloud drive or copy it to the clipboard. Also down here in the system tray, there's a little number down here. If they, classroom management, tell your students if they see a number down there, that means that you have sent them something and they need to check it out because you'll see in a little bit that that will actually slide right on back down out of the way. And then send a message. This is a way to send a static message to them. Hello, eyes to the front. I see you need um, help. This is not a live chat back and forth, but you could utilize this in conjunction with Google Docs. You could send them a message. You could see what they're typing there and you could have a conversation back and forth. Okay, guys. Well, this has been an overview of Chromebook specific tools and I will see you in the next video. Bye.